A lot of you have wondered about my routine in the Dance Congress. Well, I'm about to share it. Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, Rasa the Dancer is here. Most of you dance obsessed people already know what a dance congress is or a weekend uh, and you probably already experienced it. And if you're just starting to dance, well, dance congresses usually take whether three days or a dance holiday could be even a week. And basically it's a place, a one place where people come from all over the world or all over the cities and all you do is have workshops during the day and a lot of party during the night. And it's three days or more intense dancing and, and learning non-stop. Now, for that kind of event, you need to pack up your bag, you need to get there, and to last and experience the most of it, you need to have some sort of routine that works for you. So I am about to share you mine. What do I do when I arrive to a dance conference? Okay, so the first one, you might be in a little bit of a shock. But when I first arrived to my room in the hotel in the Dance Congress, what I do is not unpack. I do not unpack. The only thing I unpack is my dance shoes that are always on top. Then I just take them out and, and spray them. And my toiletries for my face, for my teeth, for my hair, that kind of thing. So those things, or makeup, those things I unpack, shoes I unpack, the rest of the things I don't unpack, okay? Now, let me elaborate. When I go to a congress, I don't go there just as a student. I go there usually as a teacher. That means I am extremely busy and I work extremely long hours. And usually, if it's a three-day event, it finishes on Sunday extremely late, and Monday, extremely early, I have to catch a train or a plane because I'm off to the next part, right? So the worst thing for me is to unpack everything and then at some point, Sunday night or Monday morning, I have to pack. And I would rather use that time sleeping. So what I do, I have my things very nicely packed. I know exactly what I'm gonna wear. I take that thing, I put it on, I wear it. I leave it out on uh, the chair for it to dry if it's sweaty. And then the next morning, I have a special bag where I use for used clothes. I put it in the used clothes bag and I put it next to the suitcase. So then, after all is done, everything is already in one bag, what is used. I put it on top of the stuff that wasn't used or if everything was used, it's just in one bag. I put it back in the suitcase and I don't need to unpack or pack. The other reason this works, I do not have clothes that needs ironing on the Congress. This needs ironing. <laughs> but in the Congress, my clothes that I bring to wear, none of them need ironing. None of them are dresses that are silk, that have wrinkles and stuff, crinkles. So I'm good. So I can just take it out, choo -choo -choo, put it on, ta -ta, put it back in the bag put it on top, it's all good. So this is one way I save time and I make sure I get more sleep rather than finish packing or unpacking. All right, second thing that might again shock you, <laughs> I'm a very particular person. I always pack my coffee, my own coffee. The way I drink my coffee is extremely specific and no hotel or, or place or Airbnb could provide what I need. So I usually have, I'm a Lithuanian woman, and the way my family would drink coffee, we have nice, good coffee that is already grounded. We take a spoon or two, put it in a cup, put hot water on top of it, mix it, let it stay for five minutes, and then we drink it. We leave the bits at the end, so not to drink the bits, but we don't press it, we don't use a machine, it's just not the same, I don't enjoy it. I'd rather not have coffee than have that kind of coffee. So I always pack my own coffee. In the hotel rooms, they always have a kettle. If they don't, I borrow it from the reception. And I always, whenever I need, I can have my own coffee in my room, chill, drink it, and feel revived for my next class or after a nap or in the morning, whatever that might be. I don't drink a lot of coffee. I'm not one of those people that coffee obsessed in terms of how many. I only drink maximum two cups a day, but it has to be my coffee. That's why it's always packed with me. 
Number three is for everybody, okay? Not just a particular person like me. Napping is the key to surviving a long-lasting congress. If you've been, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, trust me, you will need one. <laughs> so, I try, when I work in a congress or attend a congress, I try to plan where my nap is going to be. I don't take it to chance that I may or may not be able to. I will make sure I have enough time for a nap. And when I say nap, it has to be minimum an hour. It is not enough to have half an hour because it might take a little bit longer to fall asleep. Maybe there's a little bit loud around you because, you know, everybody's in the dance congress. There might be music somewhere in the background or another room is playing their own song. There's all kinds of things. That's why it's good also to have your earplugs, just in case. That's a good one. I always have my earplugs to have a nap. I like my nap uh, before dinner uh, and the night that it starts dancing the late night or after dinner. After dinner is even greater. So then you have, uh, well, it's not good in general to sleep and eat or eat and sleep, but it does allow you to fall asleep quicker. So in those cases when you are in a congress and you struggle to fall asleep or have a nap, of course, after food is easier. Anywho, nap is crucial. One hour minimum. Then you actually feel like you can last longer, you can spend more time dancing, and you won't feel like your body is shutting down on you. You need that time to rejuvenate. Nap is everything. Now, let's talk dinner. I always like to have an early dinner. Now, as we just talked about before, about the nap, if I have an early dinner, then I have enough time for the nap. And then when I wake up from my nap, I have a second coffee of the day and I'm ready to get ready and go out dancing. That's perfect for me. Also a huge um, importance for me to have an early dinner. I do not like dancing with a full stomach. It doesn't make me feel good. Then I, if I have dinner and I need to go immediately dancing, I will not eat a lot. I'll eat lighter. So I wouldn't feel like my stomach is playing or like I feel heavy or, you know, it's all kinds of things. And also you can wear things that you want because you won't feel bloated. Um, but if I eat a light dinner, that means by the end of the night, 4 a.m. or something, I'll be hungry again. And then I start eating at night, which is never a good thing. So to stop eating at night, I have a really healthy meal somewhere early. So then I feel like I have enough for my body to sustain the energy that it needs. And also I have enough time to whether sleep or get ready or whatever. And I won't feel like I need to go out dancing with a full stomach. So that's also very important to me, early dinner. And finally, this last one I recommend to everybody. You have to stretch every day. Now, it's not just that it's good for you, but when you are in a Congress and it's extremely intense, you're dancing all morning doing classes, so you're working your body, you're training, then you're having fun all night social dancing, your muscles have so much work that it tightens. And by the day three, everybody is walking around like, oh, this hurts, my feet, my legs, my this. And this is normal because you are just giving so much to your body in such a short period of time. So stretching is crucial. What I do, I stretch 30 minutes. Um, I don't have like a lot of time in the Congress because I say I work usually. So I don't have a lot of time to do a full hour of exercising and stretching, but I make sure I, I stretch around 30 minutes a day. So um, if I'm in a hotel room, I will stretch on the floor, uh, on the carpet, before I go shower or something. And I will do just light exercises on the floor, you know, touching the legs, stretching the sides, you know, stretching my neck, neck very important, stretching my feet, you know, little exercises like that that make me feel like, okay, I, I worked my muscles a little bit now, I stretched them a little bit and, and I'm ready to move again and I will prevent myself from having injuries or feeling in pain or being uncomfortable. So I recommend for everybody. Now, recently I went to a Congress, uh, Southport Congress that was uh, Feel the Heat, something like that. And they had an amazing thing. They had a yoga teacher that had a class early in the morning and the last class in the afternoon, which is amazing. If you can do both, it's 
fantastic. And if you are not an early morning person, you have the evening class. So this is just such a great thing. And I feel like more congresses should have stretching classes, but not just in the morning for people who can't wake up and they, they need some sleep, uh, but also in the afternoon. And I think that's a great addition for the congress and they just got it right. There you go. Now you know what Rasa is like in the Congress, how she survives, how she acts. <laughs> Those are kind of like the crucial points that you will always, when you see me, you know now what I'm up to, depending what time of day it is. Now, use the comments and let me know if you have any weird things that you like to do in the Congress. And I would love to read and smile reading them. Now, I'm going to leave you in peace. Watch these other videos about the congresses. I made a lot of them. So just check them out. Expand your horizon. See if something can be helpful. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers, guys. Let's do this. I love you. And I'll see you soon.